Hello wonderful people, Gameplay Monster here and welcome back to the Murder on the Orient Express. We are going to continue our investigation. Um, who was the 13th stabber or 13th murderer? Uh, before we continue, if you enjoy my videos, consider liking and subscribing my, to my channel. This means a lot and uh, will help helps the channel grow. So let's go and uh, see what can we do here. So we have to investigate the murderer um i mean <laughs> mr wadi office he was uh, murdered okay yeah safety deposit box okay so let's go to speak to the lady you there i have an appointment with mr wadi let me check i'm sorry i don't see any appointments this morning at all mr wadi hasn't even arrived yet Although he should be here by now. All right. Um, convince the clerk to let you enter his office. Hmm. Yeah, I think they last time they said this bank is uh, highly anonymous. So even though your customers are anonymous, considering the amount of money involved, you should still have a mention of a meeting. Yes, I can't understand it. I'll be sure to ask Mr. Wadi when he arrives. In the meantime, you are more than welcome to wait in his office. I see you're not disturbed. Please follow me. Okay. So far, so good. Let's follow her. Okay. I will wait. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Okay, I assume this is his office. Please come in. All right, I will. I can't understand where Mr. Wadi might be. Yeah, he's he's right. not going to come. I don't have much time at all. <laughs> okay, so let's search the office and maybe we can find something interesting. Uh, yeah, examine Mr. Wadi office. Okay, six. Uh, items. We have to find six different um, clues. Can we open something here? Oh, 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 come on. Yeah, we can. Come on, let's move it up. And this one also up. All right, so we got some time here. And this one. This is interesting. I'm taking a picture of it. I'll send it to Poirot. It might be useful to him. Okay. So we probably have one thing. Password. Maybe Poirot can help me. Okay, so let's just investigate other things and then password. Locked. Okay, I need key. <laughs> okay, everything is uh, just locked here. A okay. Souvenir Tower of Babel. Mm, makes sense. We know that Mr. Wadi is from Iraq, and the ancient tower is said to have been built there. Okay, maybe something here. Alice okay. In Wonderland again. Mr. Wadi seems to have really liked this book. Okay, can we open it? Yes, we can. All right. There is uh, something. Uh, yeah, it's th those texts. I mean, those numbers two, three are bold. So, and capital, right? Three. Maybe this fourth they mean something nine six hmm two okay i should write it down or maybe she's gonna write it hopefully okay what else can we do here uh, it's closed all right Oh, press Q to call Pro Poirot. Okay. Hmm. I managed to get into Wadi's office. I did a quick preliminary search. Everything is locked, including his computer. All I could find was a photo with a date on it. 
I just sent it to you. Maybe you can use it. Thank you. That might help. I've just arrived at the apartment. I'll call you when I find something. As quick as you can. I can't stay here long. Oh, so we are switching to Poirot. All right. Hmm. That was quite fast. This is definitely not Monsieur Wadi's apartment. This is definitely not Monsieur Wadi's Ah, This one should be. <laughs> yeah, there is name on it. Let's see if the key I picked up in Monsieur Wadi's luggage in Venice will open his door. Okay. Great. Nice. Let's enter. All right, so we are in his uh, house, it's in his home, so that's nice. Let's just investigate everything we can. There is something. Oh, okay, golden mustache. Aha, golden mustache. Yep. I think there is nothing else here. Oh, I can switch between them now. Oh, I get it. Okay, okay, that's cool. Oh, another Alice, right? Alice book. Yes. Oh, okay. Another number. Three, three. Hmm. The book looks damaged or something, but... Hmm. Okay. We have three, three, nine, six. Okay, I think that's all. So we have 396 maybe. Or 3396, right? Uh, can I come close? Oh, okay, I have to just zoom, right? Yeah. Oh, dart. Okay. A dart. A familiar projectile found in any pub in England. <laughs> yep. Okay. That's some clue, right? All right. All right. So let's check if we can click on something here. No. All right. So we have some letter. Let's the read key it. To the password is close. I can feel it. Okay. Look in the old edition of. Uh, okay. 1865 on pages 88, 91, 94, 96 and 98. Hmm. Interesting. So, bring me 50 bundles. All right. I will check it in a second. Um, we still have some information here. That may be useful to Mademoiselle Locke or me. I'll take a photo. Okay. There was something here? No. Okay. Okay, we have chess here. I will go there to them in a second. Oh, computer. Is it? A Swiss and Arabic keyboard. Okay, can I boot it? Mm. Computer? Okay, error. computer won't give up its secrets easily. Okay, the PC is a bit a damaged. Swiss. So, I mean, it's not damaged. It's a software, probably. <laughs> Maybe hardware issue. Okay. Staring at the clock won't help. Wow. Ah, uh, why not? Uh, there was a clock in the uh, his in his office, right? Okay. So let's go. All right, we have some kind of uh, letters here. Letter, one letter. Mm, this could be the password to Monsieur Wadi's office computer. He must change it every month. Okay. It seems to have a logical sequence, but I need to find the one for December. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. That's not gonna be easy. Can I inspect? Yes, I can inspect this one. Well, there is a pattern here, right? It repeats itself. Three. Oh, okay. It, this one is three. This one is seven. Hmm. I will go <laughs> return to it in a second. Can I leave it? I can't, I can't leave it. Think, Poirot. That is not a good answer. Okay, so I will have to <laughs> solve it. All right. So give me some time to solve it. 
I hopefully, I will hopefully manage to solve it. So, uh, where is inspect this one? Okay. So we have uh, three. Is there any three here? Because this one is the same letter, but this is three six one zero seven zero. Hmm. I mean, it repeats itself, right? Zero. I mean, yeah, zero and zero. Then we have seven, seven, and no sevens. Nine, eight, five, eight. Three, two. Okay. Five, zero, nine, six, nine, four. Hmm. That's gonna be interesting, you know? Okay, well, I can see something different here. I mean, something similar, a pattern. We have three, four, five, six. If that's the correct angle here, seven, eight, nine. Nine zero, yeah, because it go go ba goes back to zero after nine, and we have oh yeah, we have five and six here. If if this continues, six four yeah, I think zero one yes nine zero yes six seven nine zero four, and then we should have five here, right? So five. And then what? One. Five, one. Right? Nine. Three. Five. Uh, four. Hmm. No, no, no. One, one more time. Because it's too many, right? We have one, two, three, only four. Okay. So no letter here. I mean, no number here. Sorry, guys. Um, so we have one more one time. We have five, which goes from <clears throat> the previous one, right? We have one. We have nine. And then the last one is three, right? Probably yes, right? Because this one is, this one goes here. Okay, let's try it. And um, okay, so let's let's go with the numbers. And it was one, five, one, nine, and uh, three, right? The last one. If that's okay. the password to the computer in Monsieur Wadi's office, we still need to translate the Arabic characters. And there weren't any Arabic characters on the office computer's keyboard. We need to find out which keys these Arabic characters correspond to on a Swiss keyboard with its Latin characters like the one in Monsieur Wadi's office. That's My true. Little gray cells did not let me down. Okay. So, well, I had to solve it now. All right. That's fine, right? Sooner or later we had to solve it. It wasn't that hard. But it wasn't... it was tricky. <laughs> okay, so... This keyboard should help me translate this code. Okay, so we have those... the code here. Let me just check. So we have five. Oh, we have this one, right? We don't have to watch it. Okay, five. And this is it. It's gonna be it's gonna be hard. <laughs> I I don't know Arabic, so let's just compare. Okay, this one looks like it. It's probably R. Alright. Then we have uh one, right? Yes. Okay. So let's start from uh, from the beginning, and that should be that should be a uh, a okay. <laughs> that was already a okay. Then we have uh, nine, which is this letter, which is P. 
Oh, too far. <laughs> then we have... Uh, then we have three. Right? Oh, no, we have five. One. Yes, nine. Three. Hmm. Okay, let's check it out. Oh, because that, there is the, this last one. I get it. I think so. <laughs> okay. I was lost for a second, but... Don't mind me. Okay, this one, F. And then we have the last one, without number, but we have this one, right? And this one should be... Oh, E. A, B, C, D, E. Army yes. is read from right to left, so the password must oh. surely be read that way too. With any luck, this will unlock the computer in Monsieur Wadi's office. So Let we have to... me text it to <laughs> his lock. That was easy. Okay. I will text it in a second, because I still have a few things here to check, right? Okay. Oh, there is uh, this this one, this thingy. I think this belongs here. Okay. What should we do with this one? Interesting. Well, one thing there is A, B, C, D. Oh, okay, I can move them. I'm not sure. I don't have any hints here. So let's go continue searching. The last one is here. Maybe I have to return to lock. What? I don't have time. <laughs> no, oh, okay. Not, not this button. Let's go and check it out. Should we should we open the doors? Okay, someone's at the door. Who are you? What are you doing in there? I am Hercule Poirot. I am working with the police. You are Monsieur Wadi's neighbor? Uh yes, next door. I heard a noise. I thought it was Mr. Wadi, who had come home. I don't know him very well. A delivery man left a package for him with me. Okay, confrontation. Hmm. Okay. I think this one. You don't know your neighbor very well. Yes, what of it? Uh, you live next door. Yeah, this How one. How is it that Monsieur Wadi has a picture of you on his desk? There is quite a family resemblance. You wouldn't be his brother by any chance. Why are you going through his things? As I told you, I am working with the police. All right, yes. I'm his brother, Mehdi Wadi. Do you know where he is? Okay, should I tell I him? I am very sorry, sir, but I have some terrible news for you. Your brother has been murdered. You have my sincere condolences. Oh no. Aziz. My wife. My son. Their hearts will break. Everything he did was for his family. He brought us here from Iraq to give my son a better future. We can't go back. You won't. You won't. Do not fret, Monsieur Wadi. I do not want to cause trouble for you and your family. I am here to catch his murderer. When did you last see your brother? Two days ago. He was on his way to Venice. It was not a journey he was looking forward to. I knew something was wrong, but he promised all would be well soon. My son will be heartbroken. 
Aziz made the point of reading to Fadi every night so he could learn English. We hope to legally emigrate there one day. Your son, Fadi? What did Monsieur Wadi read to him? His favorite book is Alice in Wonderland. The nonsense of it all. <laughs> Why? It is the answer to a question I had. I believe your brother was a good man, forced for some reason to keep secrets, and that got him killed. Sir, there is something else. Aziz left me a letter to open if anything should happen to him. Could you show it to me? Yes, I, I will get it. Okay, maybe this is going to give us some clue. Okay, yes, and... Uh... Mm, it all makes sense. It's horrific. But to Ratchet, it would be just business as usual. At least I have Ratchet's account number. 82664. Okay. Thank you for giving me this letter. Let me assure you, the man Ratchet cannot harm you. He was killed before your brother was. Really? Who did it? The one you say hunted Ratchet? Yes, without a doubt. I promise you I will find them. Sir, we have no papers. The police... Your secret is safe with me, monsieur. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I must go to my wife and son. Tonight, I will read to Fadi from Alice in Wonderland, and we will remember my brother. Okay, so let's go back to our... Um... I need to notify Mademoiselle Locke that I have Ratchet's bank account number. Yeah, I will do this in a second. <laughs> Let me just try to solve this um, chess puzzle. Oh, come on. Chess and uh, darts, right? Mm. Okay, so... A bizarre endgame to be sure, but I suspect checkmate is possible for white in three moves. Let's see. Okay. So what should we do with this one? Interesting. <laughs> you know, a lot of interesting things. Oh, okay. So we have to do checkmate here. Choose the right move to make the situation above. So C, six. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. If I just change them. All right. Fantastic. Yep. And the last one. Checkmate. So B7, B8, or C7. Yeah, I think this one. Brilliant. That was easy. So now, what else? I'm not sure about the darts yet. Let's just switch to lock. Ah, the peculiar habit some people have of displaying things on the door of their refrigerator. I've just sent a photo to you, in case it might help you. Thank you. I texted Ratchet's account number to you. Wonderful. Did you receive my text? This must be the password to Mr. Wadi's computer. I have it. Thank you. Okay, so let's just check it out. Oh, there was time, yep. Time is not on my side. Ah, okay. So we have password to his computer. Okay, and <laughs> do I remember the password? <laughs> um, he sent it to me, right? Um, this one. Okay, 
So, password for the computer. Is that the one? Should be, right? So it should be from the be from behind. All right, so let's just try try this one. It was E three uh, F nine P one. Then it was uh what is A five and R Okay, yes, so, yeah, as, okay, on count number. Okay, do I have a count number? I don't have a count number. Mademoiselle Locke, how far along are you? Still not very far, but I'm not giving up.
a key. I wonder if it will fit the desk drawer. Those indentations are from the sheet of the notepad that was on top. This is great. All those mystery movies I watched as a kid. I know what to do. I'll send a picture of this to Poirot. I sent you a photo of doodles I found on a notepad. I hope it can help you. I hope so as well. like a safe key to me. We finally found it. Good news. I have found the key to Ratchet's safe. Perfect. safety deposit box at last I should let mr. Poirot know I was able to access mr. Wadi's computer I have ratchet safety deposit box number excellent the right answer. Mm. 
I believe I have discovered Ratchet's safety deposit box passcode. We're almost there. We're running out of time. Do we have everything? I have the key to the safety deposit box. I have the number of the box. And we have the passcode. I'm on my way. Time to rob a bank. Sorry to keep you waiting. I haven't heard from Monsieur Wadi. You'll have to reschedule with him. This is quite annoying. I'll have to reschedule. Absolutely. I... I hope I have been of service. You have no idea. That was fast. We do this as planned? Yes, I am, Monsieur Ratchet. But with the bank's questionable policy, I do not expect anyone to ask. Right. Absolute secrecy regarding their clients. The last Swiss bank of its kind. Come to Poirot, my exquisitely sculpted friend. Madame. I still haven't heard from Mr. Wadi. Well, we'll have to make do without him, now that my friend is here. It's his box we want to access. And the clock is ticking. I trust there is no problem. No, no problem at all. May I have your safety deposit box number? 4346. May I see your key? Do you know your passcode? Yes. Mademoiselle will be able to accompany me. No names, of course. Of course. I'll open the door. Go down the stairs. The guard will accompany you. Please leave your personal belongings in this bin and then go through the portal. I'll open it for you. At last, we reach our goal. Now, I will insert my key, if you allow. Thank you. I'll be by the door should you need any assistance. At last. I suspect the effort will be worth it. This collection of various personal items. Do you know what they are, Detective Locke? I do, Mr. Poirot. God help me, I do. Souvenirs. The trophies serial killers take from their victims to remind them of their kills. Ratchet wasn't just a kidnapper. No, indeed. He was a monster. Another trophy. We may never know how many people he killed. For every soul Ratchet claimed, even more are suffering. 
Diamonds. A fortune. Crime does pay. No, mademoiselle. This time it was the criminal who finally paid. Another trophy. A woman. We may never know her name. You were lucky, mademoiselle, when you met him at that cabin in the forest, alone. How many victims do you think Wretched had? Too many. I wonder who this keychain belonged to. Certainly not Ratchet. MC. The real journalist Michael Clark. Ratchet would have needed to kill him to assume his identity. He took this ring as his trophy. Another victim. The one on the left. Ratchet. Whoever he is with, their friendship seems over. The build. The hair. It could be Noah, his partner in Daisy's kidnapping. It appears they had a falling out. Another bracelet. Another victim. Another trophy. And then there's the one that we already found, Suzanne's red glasses. He knew the serial numbers on the banknotes could be traced. The rest of the Armstrong ransom money. The serial numbers match. Four years of investigation. It's all over. I finally have the last piece of evidence that Ratchet was Daisy's kidnapper and murderer. More than that, you have helped unmask a serial killer responsible for so many deaths. But even with all this, we're no closer to solving Ratchet's murder. On the contrary, mademoiselle. Everything. It is coming together. Don't you agree, detective? What? The damaged photograph. It could be Noah. You think Noah killed Ratchet for revenge? The train. What about the train? I know how a killer could vanish without leaving a trace in the snow. Wings? Camouflage. The trophies. Poirot, we have a train to catch. Not just a train, Detective Locke. We have a murderer to catch. Oh, enough! You have kept us in suspense ever since we left Lausanne. Forgive me, my friend. Detective Locke and I needed the time to put the last pieces of the puzzle in their proper places. I'll fill in where I can, but this is Mr. Poirot's show. I confess I can't help, but I feel a certain déjà vu. You are correct, Doctor. We have been here before. However, without you, we wouldn't have been able to reach the true conclusion of this story. My friends, your attention, please. I hope you have finished your dessert. You have every right to think the solution to the murder of Ratchet is a closed book. You are wrong. I, Poirot, admit that I was wrong. There is... A final chapter. What a bloody hell. What does he mean? Perhaps if we are silent, Monsieur Poirot will explain. Most of us naturally expect a journey by train to proceed in an orderly fashion from station to station. But this journey has gone off the rails. A comfortable journey, which should have been restful turned out to be quite a challenge for my little gray cells. I beg your indulgence. 
I know it will be painful, but I must update you on the strange turn the ratchet murder investigation has taken. I had two hypotheses, as you recall. A stranger boarded the train in Vinkovsky, killed Ratchet, and then exited the train unobserved. That was the first possibility. The second solution gave us 12 jurors who condemned Ratchet to death for the kidnapping and murder of Daisy Armstrong. My friend, Book, properly chose the first solution for the authorities. However, Thanks to Dr. Constantine here, a 13th stab wound was discovered, throwing that solution into disarray. Moreover, the words of a witness called into question the chronology of the night of the murder upon which the first two solutions were based. Detective Locke? <laughs> Michael admitted to having been absent several times during the night. His absence, therefore, gave multiple opportunities for a 13th murderer to slip into Ratchet's room before the other 12 jurors lined up to stab him. You are saying the man Ratchet was... was... when we... Yes. You executed a man who was already dead. But there were other suspects that night. Other suspects? Who? They stand before you. Mr. Fauché? Mr. Maury and Ms. Nielsen, and they all also had a hole in their stories about their movements that night. Mr. Poirot? Most of you don't know it, but there was a second murder in Venice. Mein Gott, another murder. The victim was a man named Aziz Wadi, a banker in Geneva who was on the payroll of Ratchet. He looked after the money Ratchet obtained from the Armstrong Ransom. Ratchet needed money and arranged to meet Mr. Wadi in Venice. One of these three knew about that money. Now, each of them had an alibi of a sort. But if any of their alibis was a lie, that person had time to murder Monsieur Wadi. Monsieur Fauché. Mademoiselle Nielsen, and Monsieur Maury. One of you murdered Ratchet and Monsieur Wadi. Are you kidding? I pour drinks for our guests. I don't murder them. It's nonsense. You are accusing me because of my knives? But why would one of my employees kill Ratchet? The killer's motive for killing Ratchet was revenge, but not for Daisy's death. The motive for Aziz Wadi's murder was also revenge. Mr. Wadi was helping Ratchet. Ratchet had an accomplice in the kidnapping named Noah. They kidnapped Daisy together. Ratchet stored the ransom money in a Swiss bank that protected anonymous clients. He forced Monsieur Wadi to watch over the money. Once enough time had passed, Ratchet felt it was safe to have Monsieur Wadi bring him cash whenever Ratchet needed it. The serial numbers of the bills would still be in a file, but no one would be actively checking it. Precisely. But Ratchet didn't just keep the ransom in his safety deposit box. There was something much worse. There was something much worse than Daisy's ransom money in that safety deposit box. During her investigation, Detective Locke found evidence proving that Ratchet was what is known as a trophy killer. He kept souvenirs of his crimes. We found trophies in the safety deposit box. There were others in a cabin Ratchet used in the Berkshire Mountains including a beloved toy of little daisies. If I'd have known that, I would have cut the bastard's head off.
I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. The bracelet found in the safety deposit box was also on Noah's wrist in a photograph. It's obvious Ratchet killed Noah. And therefore, at last, I can tell you with absolute certainty who the murderer of Ratchet and Monsieur Wadi is. That doesn't prove anything. This isn't the right evidence. No, this doesn't help. This isn't the right evidence. That doesn't prove anything. Mademoiselle Nielsen has the same bracelet as the one found in the safety deposit box in Geneva. A trophy from a victim of Ratchet, Noah. Having a similar bracelet doesn't prove anything. Yes, that might be true, if there were not an inscription on it. Mr. Poirot, you're right. The bracelet looks similar to mine, but I have no idea what the marks on it mean. I just like the design. The marks are not random, mademoiselle. These are special bracelets. They are called Morse code bracelets. Because, well, you know why. The marks are Morse code. Happily, I learned Morse when I was a young man doing my service for the Belgian army. Voila. On the bracelet found in Ratchet's safety deposit box was the name Freya in Morse code. Your first name. It belonged to your father, Noah. Noah Nielsen. Let's stop playing this little game, mademoiselle. What does yours say? Noah? It says father. Ratchet, that bastard, she kept my father's bracelet as a, as a trophy. Thank you. I have to admit your timing for Ratchet's murder was perfect. Do you mind if I continue? Would it matter? Go ahead. You've earned the right to crow. I do not make bird sounds, mademoiselle. I take no pleasure in this. You drugged Ratchet's dessert to ensure he would be unconscious when you went to his room. You stole a knife from Monsieur Mori. If it was identified as the murder weapon, he would be accused. You knew Pierre Michel would leave the train for a smoke whenever it was stopped at a station. At Vinkovsky, you waited until he was on the station platform. Then, you carefully made your way along the first-class corridor to Ratchet's room. You entered Ratchet's room with the pass key, accessible to all employees in the crew quarters. You stabbed Ratchet at midnight. But that knife, where is it? Probably thrown out of Ratchet's window before the train left the station. A thorough search after the snow melts should turn it up. My beautiful knife! Then, 
You carefully return to the crew quarters, replaced the passkey, and return to your poker game. Et voilà. The affair was not so complicated in the end. But what made the crime seem more complex? Well... It was us. Exactly. The twelve jurors who proceeded to carry out their far more complicated plan literally in the dark without realizing that the man was already dead. Speaking only for myself, of course, but I believe we would have invited you to join us. Ms. Nielsen, you killed Ratchet because he killed your father. Your motive is crystal clear. But why did you kill Aziz Wadi? It's because of Aziz that my father died. My father knew Aziz was the only one with access to Ratchet's safe, so he convinced Aziz to steal the money from the safety deposit box. But Aziz was too afraid of Ratchet. Instead, he betrayed my father by reporting him to Ratchet. Obviously, Ratchet then murdered my father. Aziz was just as guilty of my father's death as Ratchet. Ratchet was the worst of humanity. But Monsieur Wadi, if you knew his story... My father is dead because of him. I will not debate the point with you, mademoiselle. He had done nothing to justify his death. I do not see any extenuating circumstances that should allow you to escape justice. You will be arrested at the Gare de Lyon when we arrive in Paris. Judge and jury are you, Monsieur Poirot. And you get away with it. It must be nice. But think of this. I know what you did. What you all did. She's right. She could turn us all in. Relax. Hector, is it? Your secret is safe with me. I'm not going to jail. Farewell, Poirot. Enjoy your victory. Stop. No, Freya, don't jump. You're going to die. I've made my choice. We'll let fate decide. No! She jumped! Off the train. Even if she hit the water, considering the height, I doubt she survived. And with this tunnel, either way, she's gone, Poirot. I still can't believe what happened. Thirteen people took revenge on the same person. This investigation is so incredible. It almost looks like a detective story. It would surely be a bestseller. It is true that this case will remain as one of the most important investigations of my career. My only regret will be that I couldn't bring Ratchet to justice, but I can finally close this chapter of my life. Your determination paid off. You can be proud of yourself. I think we'll be arriving in Paris soon. If you will pardon me, Detective Locke, I have to settle a few details with Monsieur Book before we arrive. Please, go ahead. I still can't believe Freya was the killer. She never even cheated when we played poker. She used too much sugar. Nonsense! Her desserts were divine! Unfortunately, her actions were not so divine. There you are, my friend. Book, I have a favor to ask. Anything. When we arrive in Paris, will you speak to the police? I would rather keep a low profile. But why? Book, my first solution was incorrect. Nonsense! The naughtier the mystery became, the greater your brilliance. Please. Very well, if you insist. 
I want to thank you gentlemen for your service. The cuisine. Under difficult conditions, you surpass the reputation of the Orient Express. That is true. I look forward to seeing you again abroad, Monsieur Poirot. I promise, not all of our trips are this eventful. Princess Dragomirov would like a word with you, Monsieur Poirot. It is important. She is waiting for you in her compartment. When a princess summons me, how can I refuse? Ah, Mademoiselle Debenham and Captain Arbuthnot. Allow me to congratulate you on your upcoming nuptials. I hope you won't be too disappointed if you're not invited. Archie, really. Thanks to Mr. Poirot, there will actually be a wedding. As you say, my darling. Sorry, old man. And thanks for everything, including finding my train ticket. Count Andreni, how is the Countess? Much better now that it's all over. I misjudged you, Poirot. And I you. There is something else about my wife you should know. Why I am so overprotective. She is pregnant. <sighs> you are quite the detective. <laughs> Actually, Dr. Constantine told me. She admitted as much when he was attending to her. If it's a girl, we are going to name her Daisy. If it's a boy, Hercule, he'll be stuck with Rudolf. It's a family tradition. I wish you and all of your family much happiness. Thank you. My daughter, my great friend, and I wanted to talk to you one last time. I speak on behalf of the entire Armstrong family, as well as those close to us. You have shown compassion. We know your reputation, and we understand that your choice was not easy for you. We are all the more grateful. Thank you. Congratulations, my dear. You managed to say the word thank you, although he did manage to put us through quite a lot. You have given us all closure and some peace of mind. You should know that I regret nothing. If this Freya Nielsen person had not been involved, I would have done it again. Someone told me the Stalinists were frightened of you. I believe them. The country of my birth breeds its share of brutes and bullies, but also some of the greatest intellectual and artistic minds the world has ever known. I pray that one day we will again be remembered for that. I share your hope, princess. And of course, with the real murderer of that man out there somewhere, we are no longer guilty of much. Correct? Princess, don't push your luck too far. If you'll excuse me, I have some packing to do. Ladies? At the end of this investigation, I still have my doubts. Did I make the right choice with the 12 self-proclaimed jurors? Yes, it was the right thing to do.
As for Mademoiselle Nielsen, what would I have done if she had not escaped? Is it justice to let the Twelve go free, but have Mademoiselle Nielsen arrested? A vast question indeed. Judges often take motive into consideration when deciding the sentence for a crime. You are not a judge. Your job is to establish the facts, which you have done. The case has been solved. Another already awaits you. It is the reason you were on this train. It is time. Time to move on. He will travel with Poirot. us again, Monsieur Poirot. Monsieur Poirot, I spoke with my associates. I convinced them to give you a deal on our new Firenze SUV. No need to thank me. It's the least I could do. That is very generous, but no, I do not drive. You don't? What? But it's electric. It's good for the planet. I am good for the planet, as long as I don't drive. I don't understand. He refused. Have you lost something? May I help you? Oh, Mr. Poirot, you have done so much already. What is it you have lost? My friends. We are traveling to Poland to help with children. We were to meet at an information booth. But where do I get information on... How to find an information booth? There is, I believe, an information booth just inside the main terminal. Oh, thank you, sir. You are a great detective. <laughs> and you, madame, are a good soul. I will miss this train. News travels fast. Hey, Poirot. Say, have you seen a scruffy little guy in a green trench coat? I cannot say I have. Why? He's my next case. Another case? That was indeed fast. A detective's gotta eat. You know what I mean. I have some idea, yes. Suspected embezzler, traveling east, but not on the Orient Express. Say, you wouldn't be interested in teaming up, would you? Some good money in it. I have had enough of trains for a while, thank you. Okay, suit yourself. Mr. Plum, Mr. McQueen here thinks he may know an attorney in the Berkshires who might need a gentleman's gentleman. He's old school English. I think the clock stopped for him in 1934. I hope it works out for you, Monsieur Masterman. What about you, Monsieur McQueen? Well, back to law school for me, following my father's footsteps. We can take the train to St. Pancreas, then the Piccadilly line to Heathrow, and check out some flights. Might as well. We're already packed. I wish you both bonne chance. Ah, Poirot. Mission accomplished. I have reported to the police that Freya Nielsen killed Hatchet and that she escaped. 
They're issuing an international arrest warrant. There's a canal that runs alongside the tracks where she jumped from the train. But they say there's little chance she survived. The police have questioned all of the passengers and crew, so for now, they are free to leave. I gave them the results of my preliminary autopsy, and they have the report from the Venetian authorities. They were arguing about jurisdiction when I left. Thank you, Doctor. You have been of inestimable help. A fascinating case. I'm pleased I could assist you. Mr. Poirot, it seems our paths part here. It was an honor and a pleasure to work with you. And I am with you, Detective Locke. The case would have been impossible without your tenacity and dedication to finding the truth. You also proved to be an able con artist in Geneva. You too. <laughs> Thank you for everything. I'll never forget you. And I shall always treasure our collaboration. Well, that's that. I'm hungry. Let's go to the Vagon Rouge restaurant. They make an excellent leg of lamb. But it's only 5.34 p.m. Is food all you really think about, my friend? I'm the one inviting you. You've well deserved it. I'm warning you, I'm not going to obtain for you a secret recipe this time. Poirot, they make a chocolate mousse that is so creamy. It must have a secret ingredient in it. The last recipe came from a murderer. But it was sublime. Dear Poirot, I didn't really have time to say goodbye when we parted. I thought I had beaten the greatest detective in the world, but you unmasked me. I still had my revenge though. I even managed to help myself to a small amount of cash from Wadi's bag before you interrupted me in Venice. It will be enough to settle somewhere in a quiet little town where I will create delicacies for appreciative clients. You won't hear from me again, nor will Book get any more of my recipes. Oh, and one last thing. You may not think so, but I truly believe Ratchet and Wadi got their just desserts. Regards, F. You, mademoiselle, are entirely too pleased with yourself. You give clues no one could follow, unless they are Hercule Poirot.